وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى today we're going to take the second hadith in the kitab الشمائل المحمدية written by الإمام أبو عيسى الترمذي رحمه الله تعالى the great Imam الإمام الترمذي he said الحديث الثاني حدثنا حميد بن مسعدة البصري قال حدثنا عبد الوهاب الثقفي عن حميد عن أنس بن مالك قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ربعة وليس بالطويل ولا بالقصير حسن الجسم وكان شعره ليس بجعد ولا سبط أسمر اللون إذا مشى يتكفى إن شاء الله تعالى we're going to take 11 benefits from this hadith بإذن الله الكريم The first benefit إن شاء الله تعالى is the إمام حميد بن مسعدة البصري Who is he? حدثنا حميد بن مسعدة البصري His name is حميد ابن مسعدة بن المبارك there is a dispute amongst the scholars regarding his kunya. Is he Abu Ali? And some scholars, they say, no, it is, it is Abu al-Abbas, al-Basri Sami al-Bahili. So there's two views regarding his kunya. Is he Abu Ali or is he Abu al-Abbas al-Basri? Rawa anhu, great scholars have narrated from him. From them is Al-Imam Muslim and also Abu Dawood and Tirmidhi and Nasai and other than them. They've narrated from him. And he took from Ayyub and Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Ansari and other than them. He died when the year was 244 Hijriya rahimahullah ta'ala. Al-Imam Humayd ibn Mas'adah ibn al-Mubarak Abu Ali and there's also a review where his name is Abu al-Abbas al-Basri. From his students that took from him is Muslim ibn Hajjaj, the great scholar who wrote the Sahih, and also Abu Dawood al-Sijistani, and also Tirmidhi and Nasai, and other than them four narrated from him. From the people he took from is Ayyub and Yahya ibn Sa'id al-Ansari. He died when the year was 244 Hijriya. The second benefit, inshallah ta'ala, we take is Abdul Wahab al thaqafi Who is he? Qala haddathana Abdul Wahab al thaqafi Abdul Wahab al thaqafi who is he? His name is Abdul Wahab ibn Abdul Majid ibn Salt al thaqafi Al-Imam al Zahabi said about him, huwa al-Imam, he is the Imam, al-Anbalu. الحافظ الحجة أبو محمد عبد الله بن عبد المجيد بن الصلت بن عبد الله بن صاحب النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم الحكم بن أبي العاص الثقفي البصري He goes directly into a companion The people that took from him is الإمام الشافعي الإمام الشافعي is from the students of Abdul Wahab al thaqafi Also Ahmed ibn Hanbal and Ishaq ibn Rahuya wa kharaja lahu jama'a. A large quantity of scholars narrated from him as well. He died, rahimahullah, sanata arba'in wa tis'ina wa mi'a. He died when the year was 194 Hijriya. Rahimahullah, rahmatan wasi'a. The third, inshallah ta'ala, benefit that we take from it is the third narrator in this chain who is Humayd. This Humayd, who is he? 
that narrated from Anas ibn Malik. His name is Abu Ubaidat al Khuzai al Basriyu, Humayd ibn Abi Humayd al Tawilu al Basriyu. Yahya ibn Sa'id al Qattan, he said, Mata Humayd wa huwa qa'imun yusalli. The great scholar of hadith, the Imam in Ilal al Hadith, the Jihbith, Yahya ibn Sa'id al Qattan, he said, Humayd Ibn Abi Humayd al-Tawil al-Basriyu, he said he died while praying. And he said, وَمَاتَ عَبَّادِ بْنُ مَنْصُورٍ وَهُوَ عَلَى بَطْنِ مْرَأَتِهِ And this innovator, Abad ibn Mansurin, he died whilst on the stomach of his and his wife. He died in that way, the innovator, whilst this great imam, he died praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He heard from Anas ibn Malik and Hassan and also Abu al-Mutawakkil and Ikrimah and Musa ibn Anasin and Bakr ibn Abdullah and Abdullah ibn Shah, Abdullah ibn Shaqiq al-Uqayli and Thabit al-Bunani and Ibn Abi Mulayka and Yunus ibn, ibn Mahak and many other scholars he narrated from. These are the people he took from directly. Anas ibn Malik Hassan, Abu al-Mutawakkil, Ikrimah, Musa ibn Anas, uh, Bakr ibn Abdullah, Abdullah ibn al-Shaqiq al-Uqayli, Thabit al-Bunani, Ibn Abi Mulayka, Yusuf ibn Mahak, wa Ta'ifa and a large other quantity of Imams. وَكَانَ صَاحِبُ حَدِيثٍ وَمَعْرِفَةٍ وَصِدْقٍ As al-Imam al-Dhahbi said, he said he's sahibu hadith, he's a person of hadith. وَمَعْرِفَةً and who knew علم الحديث وصدق a truthful person رحمه الله رحمة واسعة and Imam al-Dhabi mentioned something worth mentioning here he said وَقَدْ حَدَّثَ عَنْهُ الْأَئِمَّةِ great scholars have narrated from him and this is a benefit inshallah ta'ala I'm going to go to later he said وَأَمَّا مَا ذُكِرَ عَنْهُ أَنَّهُ لَمْ يَسْمَعْ مِنْ أَنَسٍ إِلَّا مِقْدَارَ مَا ذُكِرَ he said as for the statement of those who said that he didn't hear from Anas ibn Malik except a quantity. And that he heard the remaining from Thabit. And that he said that the remaining from أن الذي رواه عن أنس البعض مما يدلسه عن أنس وقد سمعه من ثابت وقد دلس جماعة من الرواة عن مشايق قد رأوهم الإمام الذهبي مention something very important and that is حميد he's a مدلس he's a مدلس he drops a narrator out he chooses to drop a narrator out. He has taken directly from Anas ibn Malik. But then what he does sometimes is a hadith that he didn't hear from Anas ibn Malik, he will drop the person who he heard from that heard from Anas ibn Malik. And he did hear from Anas ibn Malik. But then of course there are some hadiths that he hasn't heard from Anas ibn Malik. He has heard it through a wasita, through someone who heard it from Anas ibn Malik. But he would drop that person. And the scholars, after researching, they found out that he drops out Thabit al-Bunani. Thabit al-Bunani is the person he would drop out in order to narrate from uh, Imam uh, the Sahabi al-Jaleel, Anas ibn Malik. And then he's tadlis of this hadith. It doesn't harm it. There's no problem in the tadlis of Humayd. Because if you look at the hadith here, Humayd says an Anas ibn Malikin. And the an ana of uh, Humayd doesn't harm. It doesn't harm us. Because Al Imam Dhabi mentioned it here in his Sirah Alamin Ubala and also in his Mizan al Itidal, the first volume, page 601, he mentions an Naama to Mayarwi Humayd an Anas in an Naha an Nama Samiahum in Thabitin. And the majority of the things that he does tadlis of, he heard it from Thabit al-Bunani. 
So he's only dropped out somebody who's reliable. And Thabit radiallahu ta'ala amarahimahullah was a thiqa, a reliable individual. So that inshallah ta'ala should not be a illa for the hadith. There shouldn't be any problem in that regard. Humayd, he died sanat athnatayni aw thalathin wa arba'ina wa mi'a. He died when the year was 143 or 142. The two views. Humayd uh, al-Tawil, he narrated the famous hadith لا تقام الساعة حتى لا يقال في الأرض الله الله The famous hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the, the hour will not strike until there is no one on this earth saying Allah Allah I mean, this, The hour will come um, and there is no one on this earth who, who will say Allah Allah Humayn narrated this hadith from Anas ibn Malik so he's that great Imam. The fourth benefit, inshallah ta'ala, that we take from the hadith is the statement of uh, Anas ibn Malikin where he said, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ رَبْعَةً كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ رَبْعَةً The word رَبْعَةً It means, as Ibn Athir mentions in his Nihaya, the second volume, page 190, رَجُلٌ رَبْعَةٌ وَمَرْبُوعٌ إِذَا كَانَ بَيْنَ الطَّوِيلِ وَالْقَصِيرِ The word رَبْعَة means أما مربوع if the person is between being very tall and very short. You say رَجُلٌ رَبْعَةٌ وَمَرْبُوعٌ إِذَا كَانَ بَيْنَ إِذَا كَانَ بَيْنَ الطَّوِيلِ وَالْقَصِيرِ If the person is between يعني too long I'm a too, high, uh, too long, I'm a too tall, uh, or too short, in the middle. Rab'ah, or marbu'un, that's what it means. The fifth benefit, inshallah ta'ala, that we take from the hadith is the statement of Anas ibn Malik where he says, وَلَيْسَ بِالطَّوِيلِ وَلَا بِالْقَصِيرِ فَإِذَا طَلَبْتَ مِنَ الْعُلُومِ أَجَلَّهَا فَأَجَلُّهَا مِنْهَا مُقِيمُ الْأَلْسُنِ لَيْسَ بِالطَّوِيلِ وَلَا بِالْقَصِيرِ This is عَطْفٌ تَفْسِيرِي This is what grammatically means. يعني after he mentioned رَبْعَة Then the word وَلَيْسَ بِالطَّوِيلِ was mentioned. This عَطْف of the wow here. The wow in Arabic grammar is called عَطْف. This atf is called atfun tafsiriyun. It's explaining for us what rab'ah means. It means laysa bit tawili. And there has come some narrations without the wow. So what are we going to say grammatically then? If it's without the wow, then it is bayan. And if it's with the wow, it's atf. It's a what? It's a atf. The sixth benefit, inshallah ta'ala, that we take from the hadith is... The statement of Anas ibn Malikin where he said, Hasanul jismi. Hasanul jism. It means Hasanul jismi. Ay lawnan wa nu'umatan wa a'tidalan. That the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his complexion, sallallahu wa sallam alayhi. Also his height and his structure and the meat that was on him sallallahu alaihi wasallam all of that was good hasan al jismi that's what it means his complexion and the fat inside his body he wasn't too fat alayhi salatu wasallam point number 7 inshallah ta'ala the seventh benefit in the hadith inshallah ta'ala fa idha talabta min al ulum ajallaha fa ajalluha minha muqim al alsuni Al-Imam al-Tirmidhi mentioned on the authority of Anas ibn Malik that he said Sha'ar. Again, we can say Bifatih al-Ayni We can say Sha'ar wa yusakkanu and we can also play Sukun on there. We can say Sha'ar ama Sha'ar. The eighth benefit inshallah ta'ala is Laysa bi-ja'din ay qatatin 
And we already took what the word qatatin meant in the first hadith. وَكَانَ شَعْرُهُ لَيْسَ بِجَعْدٍ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's hair was not يعني جَعْدٍ His hair is not excessively curly. That was number eight. Number nine, the ninth benefit is وَلَا سَبْطٍ وَكَانَ شَعْرُهُ لَيْسَ بِجَعْدٍ وَلَا سَبْطٍ The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam we already took before. وَلَا سَبْطٍ means his hair alayhi salatu wa sallam is not excessively straight. His hair, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was not excessively straight and it wasn't excessively curly, alayhi salatu wa sallam. That is the ninth uh, benefit. And we took that previously. The tenth benefit is asmar al-lawn. Asmar al-lawn. Asmar al-lawn means his complexion was black. Now, this hadith, it's slightly يعني, come to the attention of some the scholars of hadith. And Imam al iraqi he said, هذه اللفظة انفرد بها حميد عن أنس الإمام العراقي he said أسمر اللون حميد is the only one who narrated it from Anas all the other people who narrated it from Anas none of them said أسمر اللون all of the rest they said أزهر اللون they said أزهر اللون the only person who said أسمر اللون is حميد who narrated it from Anas then Imam al-Iraqi, he said, ثُمَّ نَظَرْنَا إِلَى مَنْ رَوَى صِفَةَ لَوْنِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمَ غَيْرَ أَمْ أَنَسٍ And then he said, I went to look at, from the other companions, whoever mentioned that the Prophet صلى الله عليه skin complexion was أزهر اللون, other than Anas, and all of them, فَكُلُّهُمْ وَصَفُوهُ بِالْبَيَاضِ The rest, they mentioned that his skin, صلى الله عليه وسلم, was what? Was white. Duna sumra, not being black. And the Sahabas who said that his complexion was white is Khamsa Ta'ashara Sahabi, and he says Al Iraqi. 15 companions. There is no contradiction here, inshaAllah ta'ala. There's no contradiction here. It can be easily reconciled. The Prophet, as we mentioned before, his whiteness was ma'ahumratin. There was some color to it. Okay? So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was not shadid as sumrah. It wasn't excessively black. Nor was he um, excessively white. His skin color was bayadun mushrabun bil humrah. He was white that had a color red to it. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He wasn't the pale Europeans that you see. Alayhi salatu wassalam. That was not his complexion, alayhi salatu wassalam. The eleventh benefit, inshallah ta'ala, that we take is uh, that hasn't been mentioned in the previous narration is how he walked. Ida masha yatakaffa. Ida masha yatakaffa'u. This narration mentions Ida masha, whenever he would walk, yatakaffa'u. The word yatakaffa'u means surat al mashi. He would walk fast. Alayhi salatu wasalam. Ka'anna yanzilu min munhadirin. It's as though he was coming from somewhere very high. It was like he was coming from somewhere high. He was, the way he's walking. Salawatullahi wa sallam on Ali. And that's going to come to us when Ali ibn Abi Talib described him. Benefit inshallah ta'ala. And it's the wording wa fi riwayat al-sahihayni. The wording of Bukhari and Muslim is ida masha takfa'a. بِسِيغَةِ الْمَاضِي It came in the form of a mādi as it's going to come inshallah ta'ala in the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib here it doesn't mention takfa here it mentions يَتَكَفَّأُ uh, as a fi'l mudari' and the riwayah of sahihayn it mentions a fi'l mādi which will come to us inshallah ta'ala and we will explain it there بإذن الله الكريم the hadith of Ali ibn Abi Talib رضي الله تعالى عنه those are the 11 benefits that I wanted us, inshallah ta'ala, to take from this hadith. Anything which I have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are both free from it. Subhanak Allahumma bihamdi ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. 
How can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this YouTube channel? Simple, like this video and click subscribe. Why? It will allow YouTube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of Allah. You'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe. That's an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on. Do it now, click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention.